Hello everyone, Bandit here, and today I'm going to be going through the Monty Hall problem in Survivor. This video will contain spoilers for the Survivor seasons on screen, so please take a second to pause this video if you need to review what Survivor seasons will be spoiled. Specific times for each spoiler will be in the comments below, as well as how impactful the spoiler is to a season. Nonetheless, I'm not going to waste any of your time with pre-ramble, so let's just get into the video. In the 11th episode of Survivor 41, when there were only 7 contestants left in the game, a twist was introduced. This twist was pretty awful and essentially forced the loser of a challenge to undertake a game of chance where if they picked the wrong box they went home. This is very similar to Survivor Australia's Earn Dilemma where chance involves whether someone stays in the game or not but at least in this situation you can increase your odds. You see, at Tribal Council, Jeff presents three boxes to Deshaun, who is the loser of the challenge. One box contains a torch, which is the good result, and two contain a skull, which is the bad result. Initially, it looks like a one in three shot for Deshaun to survive, and so he picks a box. Jeff then throws in a twist, where he picks a box and opens it, revealing a skull. So now there are only two boxes left. One contains a torch and one contains the skull. Deshaun sticks with his box, he keeps his box and it works as Jeff reveals the other box was yet another skull. But this mathematically was actually a blunder on Deshaun's part as in the words of John Cochran, It's a Monty Hall problem, you're always supposed to switch. Why? Let me explain. This diagram I made showcases the dilemma. On paper, when given three boxes, there is a one in three chance you picked right initially, meaning the odds are you picked one of the skulls. When one of the two remaining boxes are revealed to be a skull, you should switch. This is because, as already mentioned, the probability of you having a skull in your box is likely. Look at the blue side. Because of this switch, you turn your 1 in 3 chance of sticking with your box to a 2 in 3 chance of obtaining fire with your swapped box. The fact that only two boxes remain at the end of this dilemma means the two probabilities must equal 100%. As of course, one of them has to be the torch, hence why one scenario garners a 33.3 .3 success rate and the other has a 66.6 .6 success rate. Now, let's think about the do or die twist with a small tweak. Say instead of three boxes, Jeff had 10 boxes and you were given a box at random to take. In this instance, you have a 10% chance of guessing the correct box that has the torch in it. You take a box and Jeff opens all but one box that you didn't take. With one box in your hands and one box left on Jeff's pedestal, you're asked if you'd like to make a trade. Now, with eight boxes revealed to be wrong, you'd obviously take the one Jeff suspiciously didn't open, causing a filtered choice. This swap would garner you a 90% success rate, as all the 10% of each box combine into this one box, and so with 9 times 10%, we get 90%. Same with the boxes in the original dilemma, the two boxes combine their probabilities to make 33% times 2, and so that's 66%. Someone I also referred to in this video was John Cochran, and for those eagle-eyed viewers, you'd also notice Reynold Topher in the thumbnail of this video. This is because in season 26, Karamoan, a survivor auction took place where Reynolds bought a covered item, but then was presented with two more covered items and then asked if you'd like to switch. 
This then prompted Cochrane to call out this situation as a Monty Hall problem and encouraged Renault to switch. Except this situation wasn't a Monty Hall problem. The Monty Hall problem is named after the host of Let's Make a Deal, Monty Hall. On this game show, the contestants know one of the three options is the good prize and that two of the options are the bad prizes. The issue is, Reynold doesn't know his odds. Nothing was revealed about these covered items. There could have been a pizza under each of the covers, resulting in three pizzas in total, two pizzas, one pizza, or if Jeff was particularly cynical, nothing at all. This doesn't even take into consideration the fact that other things exist, like a disadvantage that could be under the covers, which, although unlikely, did happen to Will Sims in Survivor Worlds Apart. Instead of one good and two bad like the Monty Hall problem dictates, this scenario ended up being one good, one bad, and one eh, with the rewards being a rotten coconut, one slice of pizza, and the rest of the pizza. Reynolds ended up getting one slice of pizza, the eh reward. So it really wasn't good or bad. Also, another issue is that Reynolds picks what cover item he's choosing, and Jeff reveals all the items immediately afterwards, which, as we've learned, isn't what goes down in a Monty Hall problem. For this to be a Monty Hall problem, Jeff should have only revealed the rotten coconut and then asked Reynolds if he'd like to switch his covered item. In a hyper-analysis of this event, essentially, Cochrane was wrong. So that's the video, right? I explained what a Monty Hall problem is and how to beat it, and I even explained a common misconception of the Monty Hall problem. So that should be us. <laughs> no. Unfortunately, I've dedicated this channel to hyper-analyzing events and making my videos to specifically teach people on how to deal with the ins and outs of each scenario in Survivor. I have to cover one Reddit comment by JJ McClell, who puts forth the question of what would happen if Jeff didn't know what box contained what. Within the Monty Hall Dilemma, it's always stated that the host purposefully reveals one of the bad boxes to create a swap or stay scenario. That being said, if Jeff doesn't know what box contains what, he has a 33% chance to open the torch box, resulting in the entire scenario falling flat on its face and Deshaun being eliminated outright. I struggle to agree with this perspective for two reasons. Firstly, Jeff is an incredibly prominent member of the production with a lot of power. I mean, he literally makes the cast for Survivor Seasons. You'd think he'd want to know inside out about an influential twist, and this would include knowing where the two skulls and torch are. Secondly, whether you like it or not, Survivor is good at making really intense TV scenarios that have you on the edge of your seat. Think about the Force Fire Making Challenge, the Idol Nullifier, and others. We may dislike them, but it's undeniable they create exceptional moments. If you don't believe me, look no further than Survivor 41's Merge, where contestant Sydney Seagal plays her shot in the dark, a scroll with a 1 in 6 chance of giving her immunity. She fiddles with it and looks as if she's about to open it to where Jeff immediately cuts her off saying before you open it and then reveals what is happening whilst reaffirming the rules associated with the twist. This is all used to create tension and excite the audience as the build up becomes almost unbearable and we just want to see what the scroll says. I've said before that if Jeff had no idea what the boxes contained, then he had a 33% chance of revealing the torch and just killing the excitement. Unfortunately, with this, we just end up in a luck-based scenario. Deshaun has a 40% chance to win outright and can't 
really do anything to benefit his odds. Again, I highly doubt Jeff would be picking at random, but I feel I may as well cover this scenario anyway. If Deshaun picks a skull and Jeff picks a torch, a 33% chance of happening, then Deshaun instantly loses. If Deshaun survives, either by having the torch in his box or Jeff picking the wrong box left on the podium, then Deshaun's chances of winning the game rises to 50%. In this scenario, he has a 1 in 4 chance to stick with his box and win because it contains the torch, or a 1 in 4 chance to swap for the torch box Jeff didn't open. Round 2 of this situation both requires luck, it's important to mention, as it's either you get lucky, you pick the torch box off the bat, or that Jeff didn't open the torch box on you as it was left on the podium. Excuse the pun, but you're essentially playing with fire. That being said, I'm almost certain that this was a scenario made to contain a purposeful multi hall problem, as another form of game theory, the Prisoner's Dilemma, features earlier on in the season on Shipwheel Island, and this shows that the producers clearly want to see how their contestant handles game theory related dilemmas. But unfortunately, one downside of the Monty Hall problem is that there isn't a guarantee. You are playing with odds. I can show you this and this, but at the end of the day, a three box Monty Hall problem dilemma only results in you winning 66% of the time. We even saw it on the show where Deshaun didn't switch his box and still won the do or die game. Survivor has been a luck-based game, perhaps even more nowadays than it has been in the past with the shot in the dark and the do or die twist. But if you're ever in this scenario, at least you know how to increase your odds of survival. That's all from me. Thank you for watching. Like if you enjoyed. And peace.